Enjoy. 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 Take care. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Welcome to the CEO talk presented by Süddeutsche Zeitung. We're going to bring you some great speakers today and tomorrow. And in each CEO talk, we have an incumbent a CEO of a big old company mm. and, a <laughs> and a challenger, a smart young guy of a small young company. Um, we are talking about, that's the topic, the children of the revolution. New energy, new customers, new companies. Mr. Tyson, let's start with the new companies. The energy business was for decades a rather boring business. There were four big energy groups in Germany and there was a Stadtwerker and nothing was changing. In the last years, we've seen a lot of change. New companies coming into the market due to the energy vendor and due to digitization. How important are startups for the energy market? Well, first of all, I don't think energy was ever boring. It was the biggest uh, innovation of the last century. Without that, uh, none of you would sit here. But anyhow, I, I admit the business model was boring a bit. Yeah, that's uh, what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, I think, um, you know, the startups are a bit like, um, like the spice now in the soup. They, they just force us to just totally change and move. I think our industry in about a decade will be totally different from today. And um, those are the ones that, that force us to move much faster, much more agile. We all would have loved to move a little slower than we used to, but that time is over. So I think they're extremely important. Yeah. Are, are they really competitors for you, or are they only small companies you're going to learn from, and then you know, eat them? I regularly treat them as if each and every one could kill me. I think it's a smarter, smarter way to think um, that they could be dangerous and good. So, so I, I truly respect them. And sometimes they're competitors, sometimes they are partners, and that can change several times through the lifetime of such a startup. So stay, stay awake. You never know who they are, if they are friendly, if they're foes, uh, if they're partners, or if they're predators. Yeah. Christian, you founded your company, Fresh Energy, just at the beginning of the year. Are you really able to challenge such a, such a multi-billion company like Aeon? I mean, they just announced last week that they're going to sell a stake in a one company for almost $4 billion, so they have an awful lot of money. Um, <coughs> well, it's not really my, my goal to challenge incumbents in the, in the energy industry. It's more I'm thinking about the, the user yeah, I'm thinking about everyone who's sitting in this room and everyone who's using power and I want to provide a wonderful and great and unprecedented experience when dealing with energy at home. So um, maybe it will turn out that we, we will challenge the incumbents, but uh, for now we think about how we can make everyone of our customers extremely happy with the energy product. Yeah. I think that, that is an important thing he said. Utilities traditionally sought from, we call it source to sink. So from power generation, transmission, distribution, and then there is someone that uses. Startups always start thinking customer-led. They don't care where something comes from. Mm -hmm. They don't care how the process works, uh, how the total system works. They are utterly focused on customer experience and customer solutions. And that is a total change because we are very often, yeah, we have the, the traditional system, the legacy, and we always try to adapt and change a bit. And then you meet someone who could care less how your systems work, how the system works. He just brings something in and you just need to compete. Yeah. Tristan, can you explore a little bit what you are bringing in to the system? You're providing smart meters, yes. which <coughs> is rather new to the German energy market. Yeah, I, I mean, the German energy market has been speaking about, talking about smart meters for, the, for decades, I would say, but there has not been a rollout yet. And uh, we also don't want to talk too much about smart meters. What we want to talk about is the experience that you get when you become a fresh energy customer. So you have an app that shows you in the second level your consumption at home, where you can identify uh, energy guzzlers, so, um, Stromfresser in German, where you can identify how much euro am I wasting if I leave this television or my printer on standby versus if I switch it off. Right? For example, in my home, 
uh, I saw that it cost 13 euros per year for the for the um, uh, printer to be on standby. So it might be a good reason to switch it off because it doesn't hurt me. And then the nice, really nice thing about fresh energy is that uh, at the end of the month you get a real bill. So you don't pay any advance payments and at the end of the year there's no bill shock and bill surprise where you say, oh, I need to pay another 100 euros in additional payments because s most uh, providers let you pay uh, monthly advance payments and then at the end of the year someone comes by and looks at how much you consumed and, and gives you additional payments. Yeah, Mr. Tyson, do you like this kind of transparency or is it dangerous for your business because in the past we just used and wasted energy and it was quite good for your business? Nothing that is good for a customer you should identify as dangerous. If that's your starting proposition, you're meat. So I think I, I fully agree, coming from the customer, thinking about solutions that are truly helping a customer problem. That's how you have to think in any industry mm -hmm. and then nothing is, 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 is a problem as such, everything is a solution. Yeah, Otherwise, I you know, if you have a hammer or if you have a nail, everything looks like a hammer, right? So you need to think and different. And I think sometimes you even have to think one more step ahead. And for example, with fresh energy, we can also it's called disaggregation, but we better call that sh like Shazam for power. So we listen to the power that is consumed in your household and we can identify, oh, this looks like a washing machine and this looks like a dishwasher. And with a high probability, we can say, without any sensors in your household, we can tell you that this, uh, uh, your washing machine used four euro 50 last month and your refrigerator used 20 euro last month. And just one question to you, uh, is 20 euro, or who thinks that 20 euro per month for a refrigerator is a lot? And who thinks it's not much? So most of you were right, uh, it's terribly a lot. The average should be five euros, but no one knows. There's no transparency so far, and we help you identify those energy guzzlers. And the technology you use is also a reuse of a technology from California of a company we invested in earlier. So I think, you know, don't so underestimate the dinosaurs. Um, definitely we, we, we yeah. also yeah. understand what's going on, follow suit. Yeah, yeah. so you're working on similar solutions, uh, bringing smart, uh, big data into the energy business and more transparency to the customer? I think there's, if, if I look at, at, at digitization, there are many levers levels you know the first one is just improve processes and and use big data simple you need yeah. to do it uh, the next one is improve customer experience or employee experience the next one is reinvent traditional processes and products and the last one is create total new projects that are purely digital or a great combination of a physical product um, with, with with data support and you need to work on all those layers and it needs to work hand in hand nothing is as bad as your pretend to a customer it's digital and then it ends like in an analog, analog system two minutes later and he gets a written letter later. Customers are easy to understand. Is it truly digital? Is it truly easy, simple, efficient? Or are they just pretending? Can you give us some examples you're working on? Totally new products, totally new digital products? Well, one we went live with a few months ago is um, PV plus battery product, sounds simple but we combined it with what we call a solar cloud, where we say, you know, you, you can store excess energy beyond your PV and your storage at home in our cloud. Our cloud is obviously a purely digital solution we store for the customer, and he can use it. So this product you can, you know, dream on. Uh, in, 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 in telecom, it's usual, you know, you can say I have a friends and family product. In energy, it doesn't work. You know, everybody has his own contract, why? Why can't I produce solar power and send it to my daughter who studies somewhere and lives in a flat? Why shouldn't it be possible? It, it can be possible, but you need to rethink your processes, those things, those products we develop. How is this gonna change the business of, uh, um, in the energy market? I mean, at the end, we could think about selling as a single customer to other single customers, and we don't need any big energy companies anymore? Yes, surely. You, you know, we, you have to do these test things in, in, in New York. We all read about them, building blockchain. 
So peer-to-peer -peer trading, peer-to-peer -peer sharing, a lot of things will be possible. I think it's still too simple then to say you don't need any support. You know, uh, look at what the, the colleague does. You know, you, you, you add help to the customer to cut through all the difficulties. And, and that is still needed. The system is complex and people need sometimes just a hand helping them. But they will decide themselves, are they prosumers, are they consumers, are mm -hmm. they sharers? Everybody will be free and energy, you know, in our latest TV campaign, we are building on set energy free. Set mm -hmm. energy free from traditional boundaries where you're restricted to what you're allowed to do, just refuse to be forced in the system. Mm -hmm. But as Christian said, we are we're working for decades to introduce smart meters. Why are we so slow to adapt the new technologies, the di new di digital di technologies in the energy sector? Or am I not correct? It's a good question. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not an expert of all the other industries, so it's for me more difficult to say, are the others so much faster? So or is it just, you know, an, an, an illusion? I, I think, you know, the, the smart meters. The first generation was called smart, but they were rather dumb. The only thing they allowed is to send an accurate bill. But that's not a product most people are highly interested in, just getting the bill right. Yeah, this is, everybody expects to get a, an accurate bill. Only with over-the-top products, where you develop much further things, besides just getting the accurate bill. And then it gets sexy, and then you can make a difference. And sometimes good things, they take a while before they, they have to develop, especially when it's so security and privacy relevant, like smart meters in your household. So um, I think right now is the perfect time for something like fresh energy to, to uh, uh, offer like a secure and highly private privacy conform solution. Yeah, yeah if, but, but you should rather buy it on. <laughs> but otherwise, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Christian, um, when you look into the future, what digital products might be possible based on all the dat data collected by a smart meter? Yeah. Um, so we have a philosophy that we don't want to sell energy. We, we want to go away from selling kilowatt hours, which is the measurement for, for energy, towards where we generate significant value based on data, so from kilowatt hours to kilobytes, and then obviously at some point to kilo cash, because we also have investors that want uh, their return. So what are really cool products? One could be that uh, you don't need to buy your dishwashing detergent anymore. We can determine the amount of times your dishwasher has been running, and we send you a um, automatic replenishment of your dishwashing detergent taps. Now, this sounds a little bit like uh, Amazon Dash button, and I know Werner Vogels is going to be on stage here, and he's probably not going to like what I say, but it's the Amazon Dash button without the Dash button and without Amazon. Okay, so you challenge on Amazon as well? Not challenge, we can also work together. So uh, um, that's also our offer for the whole in the energy industry. We white label our fresh energy solutions. So a Stadtwerk or even one of the uh, like E.ON could, could work with, with uh, the fresh energy product. Is this something, Mr. Tyson, you can also think of not just selling energy, but selling other products based on the data collected by smart meters and smart homes? Well, just to move away from the smart meter, if you now start to think about the e-mobility coming, yeah. I think that would be very little about kilowatt hours. Very little. I could imagine you get flat products, you know, and for example, a charging with e-mobility, time might be the true element uh, that matters. And you might drive to a, to a new charging station, one charges in an hour, and you take time off with your children and play, you have all the time, get it cheaper. And one just wants to rush somewhere and he just wants to do it in 10 minutes and pays a different price. And then, you know, the data you get from, from, from all these charging, you can combine with new products that also nothing to do with e-mobility, so, or nothing with kilowatt hours. So I, I think you know the, the boundaries between industries and the boundaries between products and services, they will vanish. And if you are not open, if you're not transparent, as I think you know, your offer to cooperate is, is right. The customer doesn't want to be bound to one supplier and his products. He's fine. If you have good products, you're the entry point. But if you are then not an open and offer other products, 
It's a dead end for the customer. Why should he stick there? And it's clearly a cross-industry play, as you say. So nothing only has to do with the energy industry. But so as with on the example before, we work with an, the fast-moving consumer good companies. And we have other examples where we work with elderly care companies. And uh, we, so it's, it's not just, yeah, just the energy business, but it's cross-industry. Um, Mr. Tyson, can you give us a little idea? You just made uh, mentioned the charging stations and uh, for e-mobility, and it's developing rather slowly in Germany. When are we going to see a lot of charging stations? Enough charging stations, so that it will pick up like crazy. We we are running uh, these the e-mobility in Greater Copenhagen since many years now. More than 2,000 charging stations just in the area there. We tested so many products there, yeah, so many different technologies, so many different products. I'm 100% certain that e-mobility will pick up like crazy. I cannot tell you the year. But the, the, the discussions we have in Germany are crazy. One says we first need the sexy cars. The next one says we first need the charging infrastructure. The next one says we first need to clean the power system so it's all renewable. This is thinking like in communist times. You have a perfect planning how things all do together. I think E-mobility is a different kind, a different quality of mobility. It will get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. And combustion will stay expensive because it's a difficult technology. And thus, I don't know if it's 22, 23, 25, 26, I could care less. If you don't position yourself now as a partner of your customers in solving new solutions for the mobility of the future, then you will not play. So maybe we invest two years too early. Maybe it's half a year too late, but you, d you better start now. E-mobility is coming and it won't be stopped. And what is necessary? Who has, who has to go on a kickstart that we see this development? Probably the offer of um, more and better cars and people rethinking, you know, Today, it's they, they always talk about you know how far can you drive and stuff like this. I think it's, it's wrong. It's, it's a different, different emotional thing to drive an e-car, and when that just kicks through, then we then we see it coming. Could you think to integrate e-mobility into your business concept? I mean, the e-car is also like a you can store energy inside an e-car. Uh, yeah, <coughs> interesting. Yeah, you can definitely use the battery for, for um, maintaining your grid in, in a certain way. But uh, for us, we, we want to stick right now to what we focus on, and that is give a great experience in the home of the customer. But we also see that many of our customers, they like e-mobility, and they have an car, electric car at home, and they want to charge it. And in th those cases, we can integrate the data from Uh, and and uh, from the e-mobility into but our product. But I think only by accident we now detected one of the main differences between uh, a big company like ours and a startup. Their strengths and their weakness at the same time is the focus. It's a strength and a weakness. They are extremely good in what they do, but they have a difficulty to extend. When we are sometimes, again, it's our strengths and our weakness at the same time that we are very broad. Sometimes we're not good enough in the detail but we can combine things and make it broader. Okay, now we are at the point we can dis could discuss 20 more minutes, but now our time is running out. So thank you very much, Christian. Thank you very much, Mr. Tyson. We got an interesting look into the future of the energy business, exciting business, and remember your smartphone won't run without energy. So thank you for joining us, and tomorrow there's the next CEO talk of uh, Süddeutsche Zeitung, and we're gonna see the CEO of Infineon and Franke Amica and a robot on stage. So see you tomorrow. <laughs> Same as today. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you very much. Super. Thank you guys so much. All right. As Uli said, we are going to be doing the CEO talks every single day. So hopefully we'll... Do you say robots tomorrow? Robots. Amazing. Super. Yep. Guys, exit on that side.